2018, and ask everyone to switch off mobile phones and other electronic devices completely as they interfere with the broadcasting system, even when they're switched to silent. No apologies have been received. Item 1, it's consideration of four negative instruments. These instruments are... I'll take a deep breath because they're long. Right to interpretation and translation in criminal proceedings, Scotland Regulations 2014, SSI 2014-95. Fireman's Pension Scheme Amendment No. 2, Scotland Order 2014, SSI 2014-108. Firefighters' Compensation Scheme, Scotland Amendment Order 2014, SSI 2014-109. And Firefighters' Pension Scheme, Scotland Amendment Order No. 2, Order, sorry, Amendment Number Two, Order 2014, SSI 2014-110. The purpose of the first instrument is to give suspected or accused persons who require it the statutory right to interpretation in police custody and during police questioning, and also in criminal proceedings before a court. The instrument comes into force on 19th May. The Delegated Powers and Law Reform Committee considered this instrument its meeting on 22nd April 2014 and agreed it did not need to draw the attention of the Parliament to the instrument on any grounds within its remit. Do members have any comments in relation to the statutory instrument? Are members content to make no recommendation in respect of this instrument? The purpose of the other three instruments is to provide retained firefighters with equal treatment and comparable rights as whole-time firefighters following new employment legislation in 2000. The instruments come into force on 23rd May 2014. The DPLR Committee considered SSI 2014 oblique 108 at its meeting on 13th May 20, uh, 2014 and agreed that it didn't need to draw the attention of the Parliament to the instrument. Do members have any comments in relation to that instrument? Are you there? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> have you any comments? Yeah. No, thank you. <laughs> Are members content to make no recommendation in relation to this instrument? Yes. The DPLR committee agreed to draw uh, SSI 2014 109th attention of the Parliament as it contains a minor drafting error, well, that old one, <laughs> namely that the word his was included in paragraph 11C of the schedule in error. Somebody must have been dreaming. The word should have been omitted, as otherwise the order is drafted in gender-neutral terms. Here, here, we say to that, yes. Do members have any comments in relation to this instrument? John. Simply to say, convener, I think that we should welcome it. Um, the bulk of the, the landmass of Scotland is covered by retained firefighters, yeah. and the fact that they have parity with their full-time equivalents, I think, is to be welcomed. Yeah. Could that apply in the Highlands and Islands by any chance? It could indeed. Indeed, yes. good. I'm glad to hear that. And in the borders. Right. And let's not all pitch in with our patches. <laughs> Uh, so we have no comments in relation to that other than that rather good comment by uh, John. Are members content to make no recommendation in relation to this instrument? Okay. okay. The DPLR committee agreed to draw SSI 2014-110 to the attention of the Parliament as paragraph 1A4 of the schedule is defectively drafted and there are also, also other minor drafting errors. In responding to these issues, the Scottish Government accepted the points raised by the DPLR committee as agreed to lay an amending instrument which will correct the errors identified with the present instrument prior to its commencement on 23rd May 2014. Do members have any comments in relation to that instrument? I don't know if you're still alive. I can't hear a thing. <laughs> Thank you very much. Are members content to make no recommendation in relation to this instrument? Yes. Thank you very much. Item 2. Excuse me. <clears throat> it's consideration of the Act of Sedent Fitness for Judicial Office, Tribunal Rules 2014, SSI 2014-99. This instrument is not subject to any parliamentary procedure. The DPLR committee considered the instrument 22nd April 2014 and agreed to draw the instrument to the attention of Parliament due to defective drafting <laughs> in three areas and because the meaning of Rule 62A could be clearer. They needed my primary teacher, Miss Campbell. I tell you, she'd never have allowed this. The Lord President's private office intends to lay a corrective instrument which rectifies those errors. The relevant extract of the EPLR committee's report is reproduced in page two of paper. Do members have any comments in relation to this instrument? Thank you. Are members content to note the instrument and endorse the conclusions of the DPLR committee report? Thank you very much. We now move on to our annual report, uh, covering our work during the parliamentary year from 11 May to 10 May 2014. Sorry, 11 May 2013 to 10 May 20, is available for members' consideration. Do you have any comments in relation to the draft annual report? John? I, I have three minor points. That, that, that I important. hope they're not minor drafting errors. No, they are not. Oh, it could be shifted no, to another committee. It's a document. There's no doubt about it. Right, that. yes. Um, I, I wonder if, in relation to paragraph 20, when we talk about the legislative consent memorandums, that um, we could make reference to the, our frustrations about yes. the time frame within which we were expected to deliberate. Can, can we just put that in, then, yeah. the committee? Uh, 
would put your writing out. Yeah. Well, I think we can get the, get the gist. The committee uh, would draw attention to the, the fact that they are not pleased, whatever the wording will be, that they have some, in particular with some that are of extreme relevance, and we didn't have time to do much with them, kind of thing. Two, John? Two other minor ones. I, I wonder if in paragraph 23, in relation to the EU engagement, we could just um, make a passing reference to the negative implications of the opting out, because that's what was we heard from the Lord Advocate Police Scotland, the Minister, and indeed I think the House of Lords. Are you happy with that, everybody? Mm -hmm. Yes? Okay. Anything else, John? And, and the very final one is on paragraph 31, where uh, in the second sentence uh, it says the Act replaced eight territorial police forces in Scotland with one national force. Whilst well, not incorrect, I think we would need to say, and the central services as well. Right. Okay. Well done, John. Bacon roll doesn't half work. Uh, anybody else? The report covers we're at the 10th of May. Um, and just for general information, uh, Karen Bradley's visit was cancelled last week. Uh, have we got any update of, as to what's planned? No, we haven't. No, okay. Are we are we fully are we following this up in any fashion? Has the carrier pigeon off? Is yes. it? Yes. <coughs> Okay, so we are chasing that up because that was uh, disappointing. It may not be her fault, of course. So, anything else? We are content, right? Um, so, with these, uh, are you content to agree the annual report for publication? Yep. Thank you very much. Now, we have no meeting next week. Our next meeting is 3rd of June. At that meeting, we'll take evidence on the Taylor Review and consider petitions. And that's the end of today's business. Close the meeting.